Good evening. Tighter lockdown restrictions are being introduced for more people living in parts of the northwest of England to help prevent the spread of the coronavirus. From midnight tomorrow, residents in Oldham, along with those in parts of Blackburn and the Pendle district in Lancashire, won't be able to socialise with anyone outside their own households, and they should avoid all but essential journeys on public transport. Gatherings such as weddings and funerals are also being limited to 20 people, but workplaces, childcare facilities and businesses, including restaurants and pubs, will remain open. Our health correspondent Dominic Hughes has the full story. At the Eatery Cafe in Oldham, they're just about holding on. Open less than a year, it's been a baptism of fire. So I'll have to say hot chocolate. The last few weeks of additional lockdown measures have been especially tough. Today's announcement means tighter rules around socialising in Oldham, Blackburn and parts of Pendle. From midnight tomorrow, limiting contact to household members only. People can still shop and work and the cafe can stay open. It's a relief that we're not going to go into a lockdown. But then there's the frustration because it doesn't make sense. People are confused. Um, I think some people just don't understand when a, when a message comes out from the government that, and it's not necessarily as clear as it should be. When they're coming out with these new restrictions, make it clearer because either people don't understand it or they find a way around it. Public Health England produces a weekly watch list of council areas based partly on hotspots seen here in darker red, which map spikes in the disease. Oldham, Blackburn and Pendle remain at the top of the list. This is where the new measures are to be introduced. But some good news, infection rates in Wigan, Rossendale and Darwin have decreased, so additional measures already in place have been removed bringing them into line with the rest of England. Sensible brokered agreements of the kind we've reached today on Oldham and Wigan are definitely the way to go. Blanket lockdowns in places like Greater Manchester would cause real trouble uh, from an economic point of view, uh, hardship for people, uh, and of course, you know, would, would really kind of change people's lives in a very difficult way. Other hotspots keep developing. In Scotland, 71 new cases have been reported in the last 24 hours, nearly half of them in the Tayside area, home to a food processing plant where workers and their families are now self-isolating, as are all pupils and staff at a nearby school that's seen a number of infections. The same is happening at the Greencore sandwich factory in Northampton, which will voluntarily close after hundreds of workers became infected. And in Birmingham, additional measures are being discussed between local and national government after a sharp rise in infections. It all adds to a continuing sense of uncertainty. I think Birmingham's done a really, really good job, and yet we're still, there's still this concern. So I think it's really worrying. I think that says a lot about the fundamental unpredictability of the virus. With winter approaching um, and the, obviously the virus is still here, then, you know, it's inevitable, I guess. The measures introduced in towns in the northwest of England are helping health experts understand what works and the impact on people's livelihoods and well-being. The lessons learned here are likely to be applied to many other towns in the months to come. Dominic Hughes, BBC News, Oldham. Well, the latest government figures show there were 1,033 new confirmed coronavirus cases across the UK in the latest 24-hour period. That means, as you can see here, the average reported number of new cases per day in the last week is 992. The deaths of two people were also reported under new rules recording those who've died within 28 days of a positive COVID-19 test. That means the total number across the UK is now 41,405. Well, our health editor Hugh Pym is here. Um, there are some who point to the fact that there's more testing across the UK. Does that fully explain this rise in cases? Well, Clive, it's certainly the case that those government figures on cases can be affected by the sheer number of tests, particularly in the worst affected areas. But officials are making clear today that they do think the trend is upwards. The R number, anything above one shows the virus is accelerating, anything below one shows it's declining, has gone up a bit. It's now actually at one. Now, this is quite similar to many other European countries. We shouldn't forget that hospital admissions of patients seriously ill with COVID-19 have fallen substantially. The number of daily reported deaths is now very low. Officials say that 
the infections being picked up are quite often amongst younger age groups, less likely to need to go into hospital. What they'll be watching is whether this actually then can affect older people in weeks to come, which might push up hospital case numbers. It's going to be monitored very, very carefully in the weeks ahead. And as one source put it, it could yet be a bumpy autumn for cases and outbreaks. Mm. OK, Hugh, many thanks. Hugh Pim there.